So guess who now likes small town contemporary romance? Somebody call CNN. I know it's blasphemous, but until I read The Best Man, I was a Kristen Higgins virgin. Please refrain from burning me in effigy because I am now so here for this woman's words. Faith and Levi, OMG! These dorks grew up together and just quietly grunted at one another until one day. Faith got ditched at the altar by Levi's BFF. And whoopsie daisy, it turns out our boy from the other side of the tracks was kind of to blame. Faith runs away, Faith comes back, and bam! Internal conflict is popping off everywhere. Despite all their baggage, this OTP is fun. And I do mean they got personal back, like a lot of personal baggage. Levi's got abandonment issues, Faith's got childhood guilt issues, she was the rich chick, and he was the poor kid. So with all that kerfluffle, shiznit was bound to get real, and it did. It also got really fun. Queen Bee Kristen writes deep POV with tons of character personality. Faith's heart set heavy in her chest, like roadkill, like a dead stiff porcupine. Okay, that was a really pathetic image. Even now, the dead porcupine was resurrecting and giving her a reproachful look. I was just sleeping, dummy. <laughs> I love crap like that. Tidbits like it are gonna make your heart go happy for these book people. These two fluff muffins work through misunderstandings and a butt ton of personal crap to find their happiness. The story is a good reminder to not let the past define you or allow old wounds to keep out new love. And I super duper love that both Faith and Levi underscore that message. Having two characters with different worldviews and different backgrounds share such a similar internal conflict makes me so damn happy. It makes me go all squealy. Smarty pants writing is awesome, but our OTP's bickering dynamic is even awesomer. They're hard-headed, they determined out the butt, and they do this. Also this, but mainly this. Faith is sassy towards Levi. Levi knows how to push Faith's buttons, and together it's just cute. Ow. Oh, and sexy. Did I mention sexy? Because sexy. For Lord Jesus on high, these two have so much hot chemistry. The writing style intimately paints the attraction and admiration between our leads. But that same writing style does something I both love and hate. Y'all know vanilla sex is my pet peeve, but this book goes a step farther. No sex. Our OTP do do the boom boom jiggity, but it's all off screen. Which kind of sucks. When done right, sex scenes can give very unique character and relationship perspectives. So when we don't get the sex scenes, we don't get that perspective. But a good romance doesn't necessarily need sex to be good. And the best man proves that fact. Because y'all, did I mention this hero snatched my fangirl ass? <laughs> there were so many big emotions inside Levi's little gestures. Like, Bully does an accident reconstruction at old Ark 30 so he can give his girl some peace of mind. Boy also gives Faith a token of his feelings that he's kept since he was a kid. Wait, see? That man gave me all the damn hard eyes. One, good scenes were good. And two, this novel gave me real humans acting like humans. I normally don't give a skeever's ass about tertiary book people. And I so rarely fall in love with the family. But holy crap, I did here. So many characters had me cracking up, like Faith's friend Colleen. God love that woman. Hey, asshole. I'm not speaking to you, but if I was, that's what I'd say. <laughs> I am so here for girls defending girls. Platonic and familiar love are very difficult to sell, believably, but Kristen peddled the gold out of it. The grandparents, the dad, the siblings, their dynamic felt like a real family. They're not a Hallmark Lifetime movie, but they also weren't a Lannister family level of dysfunctional. There were tons of small little family moments that were so entertaining, and they read so real. Levi once walks in on Prue saying that she looks like a plucked chicken while holding a bag of frozen peas on her groin. <laughs> Never has a bikini wax made me laugh harder in my life. And honestly, stuff like that is why this book is so damn good. Amazing pacing, feel-tacular romance, and hellfire! I was invested in literally every character. Literally all of them! Kristen pulls you into everybody's story. And I swear my brain has been to Finger Lake District now. It's 2016. I live in a town so small that we don't even have a Walmart. Hell, our slogan is literally the best town on earth. 
small town contemporary is my reality, so I don't go looking for it in my fiction. Unless it's Bacchus to Negan. Woman, give me more! I tweeted my reactions at Kristen whenever I was reading. I fangirl tweeted so hard at that woman, I'm surprised my fingers didn't explode. This is my first technical, real, small town contemporary romance, and I kick myself for not having tried it sooner. So if you guys have read any and you have suggestions that I should put in my face, I would kindly take those because I love being proved wrong. I think Sarah Waddell one time says that if a romance has a dog on the cover, it's like guaranteed to be good, or at least attract attention. This did both. Thanks for watching, guys, and if you have any recommendations, please put them below. Because apparently I need all of the romance novels that were ever written in the entire history of humanity. Wow, I'm genuinely tired from fangirling. <laughs> I think I need to shut up now and go take a nap. Slippy time, be beckoning me.